Good morning, friends of Jesus. I want to bring you a devotional from 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17 this morning. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride and possessions is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. So what does doing the will of God mean? Whoever does the will of God abides forever. What does John mean by doing the will of God in this passage? Well, let me answer that, first of all, by, by focusing on the negative. Uh, the will of God in this particular passage of Scripture tells us not to, not to love the things of the world, the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, or the covetousness, the, the pride of life, the possessions of life. The world wants us to try to find life in all the things that it offers. And uh, it's not to be found there. But let me also answer this from a positive perspective and take us back to a statement that Jesus made in the Sermon on the Mount. Remember he says in Matthew, I believe it's chapter 6, verses 19 to 21, he says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where, wrath, where, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in, in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The, uh, the will of God for us in this life is to lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven. Not treasures on earth that moth and rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal, for us to lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven. Now, I don't believe that Jesus is telling us not to have uh, retirement funds in this world. He's not telling us, uh, uh, he, he's, he's not saying anything against uh, uh, having reserves for, for rainy days, but he's really telling us that the, the weight of our investments are to be heavenly investments. Things like investing in people. It was Zach reminded us in our in our sermon last week, people are made in the image of God. We are to, to, to have our investments in caring for people, loving for, loving on people, and and uh, and discipling people, teaching people about Jesus. We're to have our focus on the gospel. Our investment is to be in the gospel itself because the gospel, when people receive Jesus as Savior and Lord, um, people have their identities changed. They have their statuses before God changed as they, they are adopted into God's family. They're justified. Um, pe people have their desires changed by the Holy Spirit. The, the gospel... Uh, changes our destinies so that so that we the moment we receive Jesus we gain eternal life and, and we have this eternal life that we're going to fully taste when we get to heaven so so the, the Bible says focus on people focus on the gospel focus on on kingdom oriented churches making our investment in kingdom oriented churches and 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 finally um, Focusing on missionaries, investing in missionaries, especially the missionaries who are taking the gospel to to the hard, to the hardest, and most difficult uh, difficult places. Our our investments in this life are not to be in earthly treasures, but they're to be in heavenly treasures. And I I firmly believe that we need to to have our our earthly treasures that we need to hold them in an open hand. And, and uh, we are to allow the Lord Jesus to, to, to be the one who, who uh, tells us how to use our earthly treasures. 
and we are to to be weighted to, to be weighted heavily in our heavenly treasures. Let me tell you a quick story about the Dages family. We we were challenged. Um, we are being challenged in this in this very area right now um, with a an earthly treasure that that God blessed us with uh, many years ago. My parents, uh, Dr. Robert and Phyllis Dages, purchased a a vacation home in Pennsylvania back in 1967, and it is one of the most beautiful spots in the in the state of Pennsylvania. It is a vacation home um, that is on a peninsula. Water on three sides of the house, tucked away in a cove. It's on three quarters of an acre. It's outlined by blueberry bushes. Great bass fishing. It is a place to that, that we have used as a vacation that we've allowed missionaries and pastors and friends. Um, but we have created uh, memories at our lake house um, in, in several generations of, of Dages's. My parents bought it in 1967. They gave it to um, the kids. And now the five siblings are, 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 are co-owners. And, and recently, the Lord prompted on, on my heart that I was to, to challenge my siblings whether this was a time to sell this earthly treasure. This is an earthly treasure that has been given by God, that we have, we have attempted to be good stewards of God's grace on this vacation home. And um, so we're, we all prayed about what, what we should do with this house. And, and the family voted to sell it. Now, if I were not a Christian, I don't think I'd be able to let go of this. This is such a nice vacation home. But, but the Lord laid upon my heart, well, one of the things that helped me let go of this vacation home to prepare it to, and, and sell it was the idea that, that the world is passing away. Everything in the world is passing away. And as beautiful and as nice and as relax, relaxing as this place has been for the Dages family over generations now, what the Lord has prepared for us in heaven is far better. And I can let go of this. I can, I can pray about selling it and actually sell it because this cottage, as beautiful and as nice as it's been for the Dages family uh, over the decades, I can sell this. We can sell this because it's just a taste of what God has prepared for us in heaven. If I weren't a Christian, I don't think I could keep an open hand on this piece of property. I think I would clutch it and hold on to it because there's really nothing like it um, in, the, in the state of Pennsylvania. So what does it mean for us to do the will of God when it comes to, to the things of the world the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the boastful pride of life, and, and, and pride in possessions. Um, it means to resist these things out of our love for Jesus, not, not give in to these things. But when it comes to treasures, it, I really believe it means keeping our treasures, our earthly treasures, with an open hand and being good stewards of the grace of God. And making sure our, our treasures are really weighted towards heaven. People, the gospel, kingdom-oriented churches, missionaries especially who are serving in difficult places, invest our time in these things. Invest our finances in these things because the world is passing away. One, one more final point on this. So it's easy, and I know this by experience, it's easy for us to, to grip our earthly treasures with a tight grip. And sometimes God has to peel our fingers back from holding on to earthly treasures with too tight of a grip. And again, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have reserves and that we shouldn't have, have retirement portfolios. But oftentimes we hold on to things too tightly. And the Lord 
has to peel our fingers away so that we'll be stewards of what he's given us in this world. When I was a, a wrestler in a high school and college, one of the things I hated when I wrestled was when I would wrap my, my arms around my opponent and, and he would reach in and he would peel my fingers away one or two or three at a time. Now, that's an illegal move, but it hurt like crazy when a wrestler would peel those fingers away uh, in order to break my grip. And we'll find in this world, if we hold on to things too tightly, and if we aren't stewards of the grace of God, resisting sin, but stewards of the treasures that he's given us, that God has his way of coming in and peeling our fingers back in a way that hurts, because he wants us to be invested in heavenly treasures. And, and the key to the, the, to the Matthew text is that where our treasures are, that's where our heart is. God wants our hearts to be invested in people and the gospel and kingdom-oriented churches and missionaries because these things are passing away. And the rewards that we have in heaven will come back to meet us for eternity when we can invest ourselves in heavenly treasures. God bless. Go in peace.